you first showed up to Texas Tech. It's been a while. What, what you see from them, if they changed any? I mean, they gave you a pretty good game out there. Right? Yeah, I mean, we got up big early, had a big lead at the half, then they went on about a 75 nothing run. Um, you know, I they they're a team that um, not dissimilar that much from a Kansas. Like they have good half court execution. Um, you know, they they aren't a team that runs a lot. Um, they're not a fast paced team. They can score because they can execute um, and they can make threes. Um, Vivian Gray is. A, a monster to handle. Um, I know a year ago, I mean, even talking to our team, like she had played almost all power forward against us. And this year she's playing a ton of small forward and it was a matchup that hurt us just size wise. Um, you know, it's a game that I went to Kate at the three out of necessity and went big in the fourth quarter um, to, to match her. And a lot of times teams, you know, have, have trouble matching us because of our um, you know, kind of our quickness at the at the guard spot. So, um, you know, they, they play through Vivian just about everything they do. Um, she's going to get a lot of touches and a lot of shots. She's going to make some. She's going to miss some, um, you know. But but I think the last time we, we probably gave up too many threes. They certainly had some players make threes that hadn't going into that game. Embry Gray and uh, Taylor Thomas had not really made threes, and all three of them. Uh, made threes in that game, but we've got to do a better job on on the ones that we know can make threes. Hightower, McKinney, Gerlich, we got to do a better job. Gerlich really lit us up, was 14 points over her average against us. So, um, you know, a team that probably, I think they can't move out of the, the seed that they're in right now. Um, so it's not a game that they're playing because they have a chance to move up or, or change. Um, the dynamics of, of what they're going to do um, in the Big 12 tournament. But I think certainly um, want to play well. You know, we'll, we'll be, um, you know, coming off a win against TCU. Uh, before that, they, they've played a lot of teams close. And I think just the fact that they've gone on the road and beaten OU at OU, beaten Texas at Texas, have a win over K-State, like – um, they have everyone's respect because of who they've beaten, you know, and then maybe haven't closed on some games that you might think they, they probably could have and, or should have won. So um, certainly not going to take them for granted, that's for sure. Do you feel less pressure going into the game because you already won the Big 12 title, or do you still feel pressure because you have to win and you want to win outright? Um, I think it's just the pressure of – um, wanting to play well, period. I, I don't think it's, you know, we're the number one seed regardless, um, but, you know, we're still playing for NCAA tournament seeding. Um, you know, it's, it's senior day. Um, it's a day we hope we have a great crowd to not just celebrate our seniors but a championship. So um, I just – I can't – I think the pressure is the idea of, like, do you really want to celebrate a championship, like, if you've lost the basketball game? So, you know, it's kind of more the pressure to play well, the pressure to show up and compete at a high level because, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's our standard, you know. And so, um, you know, and it, it, it's a good opponent. It's a worthy opponent. Um, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't feel like there's been any give me in the league. I know TCU right now is, is maybe on track to finish last or Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma State gave us a great game up there. And TCU gave us – two and a half good quarters in one game and three good quarters in the other. So, you know, you just don't take any um, – I certainly don't, and I don't want my team to take any game for granted, any win for granted. Um, you know, we, we just kind of have to keep taking the approach of let's win let's, let's win the day, you know, on Sunday. And then, you know, it'll be a lot more fun to celebrate afterwards, um, you know, if, if and when that happens. You know, it's crazy. Like, I, I felt like, you know, as people were congratulating um, me, our team, our staff, after the Texas games, um, I don't know that I, like, felt as much joy as I felt relief beating Texas. Like, and maybe that's a different pressure. Maybe that's, um, you know, I, I don't I, – I just felt joy, honestly. Like, beating Iowa State, it was – it wasn't relief. It was joy. I mean, relief would have been maybe walking away with a one-point victory, you know, but I think being able to enjoy it, not having the pressure. I mean, I really thought that game would come down to a late game, need a two, need a three, ten seconds to go. Like, 
you know, my mind was very dialed into like having myself prepared to um, walk in those shoes. And so, you know, to play in front of 10,000 people and have them to never really affect the game, never let them get into the game. Um, you know, once we went on the 4-0 run to start the third, it was like the only time I heard them was when they were complaining about the officiating, you know, but other than that, um, just couldn't get them, you know, any momentum. And so, you know, I think that was more joy. I mean, it was it was um, just gratitude and and thankfulness and 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 joy to to be up there and spend that time with this team and and uh, this staff. Yeah, I mean, it's it's easy, you know, especially like Jordan maybe should play against Iowa State every game, um, you know, because she, she seems to, you know, have their number. Um, you know, Jordan is someone that um, I recruited at Florida Gulf Coast. I mean, I, I don't know that she would say it came down to Florida Gulf Coast, Clemson and Alabama, but that's what I felt like, you know, when I was there. Um, so at least, you know, knew her a little bit, knew her family a little bit. Um, but, you know, Jordan was the first person that said, no, I'm coming. Like, you know, and I, I don't, I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's an equivalency outside of sports to when someone believes in you enough, like, like Renee Montgomery was the first free agent that said yes to me when I became a head coach in the WNBA. Jordan Lewis was the first recruit that said, you know, she obviously had a plan to come to Baylor, but it would have been very easy um, to change course. You know, there was no commitment at that point, truly. And so the first person that just said, no, 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 no I'm coming, because I talked to her the night I was hired, thinking I was going to have to go into this spiel. And she's like, no, coach, I'm good. I'm, I'm coming. And, and, and so, you know, her belief in me, I mean, I think that's what the that moment was about. I mean, that was so beautifully captured in the picture of us hugging after the game, um, you know, because I told her, like, I'm just, I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful that she believed in me and she still believed this was the right place um, because Jordan Lewis could have gone anywhere, um, you know, in, in this COVID year. So, um, you know, she just, you know, we put the ball in her hands a lot. Um, you know, I don't think it's easy to walk into a situation where you have um, three players that have been somewhere and been so important for four years and, and have the voice, uh, be comfortable having a voice, um, walking into a situation where there's been so much success. But I think she's become a very good leader. Um, I think this team has respected her from the very beginning. Um, there's a maturity about her. Um, she's not super loud. She's, you know, not the most outgoing. She's, um, but there's a, there's a maturity and a composure um, that just makes us a better basketball team. I think she's got a great basketball IQ and, um, you know, is, is, is going to be a pro. Um, um, Queen. <laughs> Queen's a handful. Queen is, uh, I, what I love about Queen is that I can say exactly how I feel and I don't have to worry. Um, about her feelings, which sounds really strange, but I think so often when you're coaching females, um, you, you have to say things the right way, you know, and, um, you know, it, I, I think for the most part, that's what I try to do anyways. Um, but I think she's someone that, that, um, rises to challenge, isn't, isn't afraid to be challenged hard. Um, you know, you tell her when she's great and when you tell her when she's not, and, um, you know, you can get her on and get on her in practice. And the minute practice is over, um, she, she'll give you a hug. Like she just has this ability to let stuff go, um, you know, which, which I really appreciate. Like I just don't have to sugarcoat anything with her, um, you know, and, and this team is at its best when she's at her best. I mean, there's no question when you look at us analytically um, that the difference in our wins and losses are queen. You know, like her, her production, um, her putting the ball in the basket, her energy, um, which to me equates to rebounding a lot of times for her. 
um, the numbers are staggering um, in terms of wins and losses for us. And obviously, it's not a huge sample size because you're talking about five losses. But, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, she struggled against Maryland and struggled against Michigan. And therefore, we struggled against Maryland. We struggled against uh, Michigan. But um, someone who's one of the best athletes I've ever coached, just pure athletes, um, you know, and, and I think her I, I still feel like for her, her best basketball is in front of her. But she's she's funny. Um, you know, she entertains me. She um, can be a great hype person on the bench, um, you know, and, and just has a really unique spirit. Liz, um, you know, she's just so consistent. I mean, it's it's um, it's the thing like about wins and losses, you know, I mean, she's just she's good regardless. I mean, she just um, has had so few um quote, bad games, and bad games for her, you know, aren't bad games for normal humans. Um, but, you know, we talked a lot about in the Kansas game we played up there, how important it was for us to win when she kind of struggled um, because other people had to step up. Um, but, you know, you know, I, w I would put her and Kennedy Carter um, in this category of just kids that can do things that you can't teach, um, that you just kind of enjoy and shake your head sometimes. Um, at, at things they can do uh, with the basketball in their hands. And, you know, I think her she has grown so much. Like, you know, I, I'm not sure she's going to win Naismith Defensive Player of the Year or anything, but I think for her to be on that list this year, um, you know, I, I, think, I think in the past Kim tried to hide her a little bit defensively. Um, and so for her to step up to the challenge of defending and Ashley Jones and some of the key players in this league – um, and doing a really good job and, and being really committed. I think she's made a ton of progress on that side of the ball. I think she's had a ton of growth in terms of um, understanding the game and, and starting to understand the whys um, and not just rely on talent. She's always loved watching basketball. Um, I mean, Liz is one of those players that watches the WNBA, that watches the NBA. Um, but, you know, I think is really starting to understand um, – kind of the X's and O's of the game and, and, and why we do some of the things that we do and why they work. And, um, you know, I mean, she's she's had some really big screens for us, like things that – like kind of those little detail things that when you're the best player and you're the best offensive player get overlooked. But when you set a screen and you get your teammate an open shot, um, you know, how important that is, you know, for, for the team. Um, and so, I mean – I'm just excited to see like how it translates for her in the future and 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 hopefully, you know, I've I've given her um I've given her this staff has given her a head start, you know, cuz that's it's what I want for anyone that has pro aspirations is that I'm giving them a head start, you know, that they're going to walk into the pro game and and understand it better, you know, be be less um wide-eyed bushy tail rookie, you know, and and certainly there's a transition because the players are so big and strong and good and they're fighting for jobs and it's just different. It's just a different energy, but you know, that she's going to have like more confidence based on, she knows terminology. She, she's going to have already been, you know, I mean, I, I joked the other day that I hope Washington drafts her because, you know, we've put some sets in that, and I actually call them the same thing. The mystics call it. I said, so when, when, when they run four up, you know, you know what's getting ready to happen, you know, and then they're going to run four in, they're going to run four down, and they're going to run four out. But at least you got, you got four up down. So, um, you know, I just – I appreciate all three of them, two of them staying, one of them coming, um, and, and kind of, you know, I, I think that I wasn't the only coach Queen and Liz would have stayed for. Like, I, I don't – I think they wanted to stay. I wanted. I think they wanted to see their career um, finish here. Um, but I still appreciate that when I was hired, that you know they've been so receptive to, you know, who I am and how I coach and and how I've led them, and hopefully served them. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I took the approach with every kid that I had to recruit them, um, you know, but it was, it was, um, you know, I've said this before, I, I think that with, with both Jordan and Liz especially, um, you know, Ray Caldwell, who coaches the San Antonio Finest, who was Liz's AAU coach, and, and, um, 
Al Honor, who coached Central Florida Elite, and Jordan. Um, I didn't have to say much about myself. Like, I think they spoke for me, you know, in terms of um, this, this is really good for you, you know, because Jordan was obviously, you know, making a choice based on wanting to, to somewhat lift her draft stock, but also opportunity to win and win at a high level. Um, Liz wanted to per, per, prepare herself to be, I mean, this is her goal. Her goal is to be the number one pick. And so, you know, what better way than to play for someone who knows what that looks like and what that feels like. And so I think both those AAU coaches were able to speak to them about that. Um, so certainly I still think Liz was, was listening, you know, the first time we met and wanted to feel good about, you know, how that conversation went. Um, but I think a lot of people had told her this was going to be really good for her. So um, I had to sell myself less and more. Um, here's, here's, you know, I was really honest with her from the beginning about here's where I think you're at. Here's areas that I think we can we can help you improve in um, because that's just the way I, the approach I take with everything. Like, um, you know, like. Let's let's tell the truth right now. Let's talk about let's talk about the good. Let's talk about, you know, if you want to be the number one pick, like, you know, and and I, I've said from the beginning, Mac did not hire me to make her the number one pick, and it hasn't been my goal. My goal has been to put her in a situation um, that she can show why she can she can be that, you know. But within, um, you know, team basketball and and doing it because it's best for the team, and and we're we're not out. There's not five people out there all with the goal of making list the number one pick. The goal is to win basketball games.